Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about Sangsung Gumpup Saban, the form number four, part one. You know the spiel. I'm wearing this uniform again, not because the forms themselves are not canonical, but my own interpretations of them are not going to be. So when something is canonical, I'll make note of it. However, most of this is going to be my own take on what the form is doing. So let's break it down. So the very beginning of it is already going to be a fun uh, canonical versus does it really <laughs> kind of thing, right? So the very first motion, uh, so with previous draws, right? So we haven't had actually a draw straight into defense yet in the form. This is allegedly the first one. That said, there's something called the palto chakkam or palto chakkam uh, that both have a normal draw defense as the intro. And that's associated with form one. However, this is the first time in a form that we're drawing straight into a defense. So, the thing that they, the major thing that the Federation uh, talks about is how horizontal the sword is for this particular one. So normally, like it can be held up on an angle, right? This one is allegedly perfectly horizontal, and from there, you're going to do your draw into that defense. So. The canonical reasoning behind it is that it's allegedly faster, uh, so it's allegedly faster to have it horizontal to draw as opposed to on an angle up here to draw. As with everything, try this yourself, right? So before you uh, listen to the next you know, 10, 15 seconds, maybe probably a minute or more, try it for yourself, see if it feels faster to you. So two things to note that we talked about, I believe at the end of the form one video, is the idea of where that scabbard is for Gundo. Again, when I have my scabbard out, you're gonna notice that there's a fair amount of distance between the node uh, and the actual belt. However, for the Federation, they generally like it tucked in and notice where I usually have the butt of the sword on the center they want it essentially orthogonal to the body this way. It's always orthogonal to the body, but it's not always true. Anyway, orthogonal to the body, right? So here in your hip going into that draw, right? Again, the horizontalness as opposed to the verticalness. So again, try that a couple times and we'll discuss. From my own experience, this is in fact slower than a normal draw. The reason behind it is if you're using, especially a curved sword uh, like this, right? This naturally gonna draw out, again, if you have the blade up as we do like more modern martial art, or more modern swordsmanship as opposed to down this way. Uh, so maybe that might be a reason why you might want that horizontal, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but the idea is like, if it's already kind of up on angle, your hand naturally is gonna come this way as opposed to this way. This is a very weird angle for your hand to naturally go, as opposed to like as you extend out, it's going to naturally come more towards shoulder level. So naturally, this for me, first of all, feels smoother, it feels more comfortable, and it feels faster. So even if you do adhere to the Federation being only in your hip, again, essentially only using your right hand and your hip to draw, on an angle here, not bad. Uh, versus if you have it horizontal, you have to kind of have that weird jerk in the shoulder to move it forward. So the canonical reason is that it is faster. I recommend that you try it for yourself. Always a good thing that that's the very first thing we're talking about. It's already a um actually. However, let's move on to the next part, right? So we're here, we've drawn whether or not it's faster or not, it's up to you. So from here, similar to what we talked about in form three, so we have, again, almost like your, your waiting action, right? I step initially, and once that back foot comes into essentially where my walking stance would be, once it hits that trigger, then I'm going to move forward. So from here, if we're in a defense, 
I advance. I'm going to come in. Once it hits that trigger here, I'm going to step right into a block to our left side, into a center cut in our so to say, in case a new angle helps. So again, you advance. That should be a fast motion, slow motion, bring that foot in, hits that trigger. One, two, nice and fast. So let's talk about potential reasons why you might do this. So you might think initially, if I'm going from A to B, just get there, right? <laughs> right. Um, so part of the reason might be to uh, bait someone in, right? So if I come in this way, that initial movement might be that trigger for them to do something. And with a longer stance like this, I'd be able to first of all maybe push it back if they do do something I can cover. Or if they do do something, I can strike from here. I can lean in for another strike, potentially to the throat or something like that. So that initial fast motion here could be that bait to kind of like trigger them to do something. But if they don't fall for it, instead of just kind of holding this position and waiting and having kind of a uh, starting from a stop, essentially, having that coming in, that also activates the glute and the core, getting you used to and getting ready to strike. So essentially, one way you can interpret this is by the next movement is essentially coming from a rolling start, right? So instead of from here and just be like, step, by coming in and giving yourself some forward momentum, one, two. That might help you get a little more power, might help you get a little bit more, more of a jump on your opponent. So some partial credence, again, playing with other martial arts as well, something that's very, very common in kendo is not the back foot per se, but that front foot kind of like, you can almost like see like the toes like gripping the floor, that front foot kind of trying to move forward, triggering them to do something silly, and then you'll go in for that like, equal men or something like that. So same thing also with open hand, right? So if you're kind of uh, sparring up here, kind of moving in, fa uh, essentially faking that jab, all these things are uh, things used in other martial arts that can essentially bait them to do something they can already anticipate. And that 45 degree block, this one is just a mirror image of what we did in form three. So an idea with this as well is if I'm pressuring this time on their, uh, on their right side, but my left side, if I'm pressuring on their, that side of the sword, as they uh, you know, push back on it and I release the pressure, their sword is going to naturally go in that direction. So then by hitting it this way, I'm going to get a little more oomph with it. And then allegedly I'll be able to land that center cut, ideally towards the head, but you can also aim for the wrist, really wherever you can match that shot. And the next motion's interesting, right? So from here, we just did our one, two. Presumably they blocked it in some capacity, right? So we're going to draw back. So not stepping back, but just drawing that back foot back into a block and we're going to allegedly receive that center cut it's going to come in and as i receive that cut i'm going to counter with a center cut again and then i'm going to check behind me and go into defense so the idea behind this isn't a bad one the actual techniques associated with it let's talk about it probably makes the most sense if i go directly towards you right so if i'm here i have deflected your sword out of the way i've honed in a cut on you, you probably defend this, you probably blocked it. If you're recovering with a diagonal or a center cut, which is two of the more likely cases, I pull back here, this would be good for that center cut or your left cut. If the sword has stopped here as a two live blades would, going straight back in <laughs> isn't the best idea, uh, either with that center cut or that diagonal. If you slid down, which is the usual assumption under Gumdo, whether or not that's logical is, is up for science, right? But from here, if it deflects down, maybe coming back into that center cut, right? Now, one issue with that is going to be distance, right? So imagine uh, that if we use, actually we'll use the E as essentially where my opponent would be. So if I'm here and I cut, that's a little bit close probably and I counter, he's gonna be moving, he or she, or whoever, right, is gonna be coming closer to do that cut. So that would probably be around here. Again, I won't, be, I won't know until post. 
But if I slide back in with that center cut, I'm essentially like headbutting that person. So the distance is not a good, uh, is not well represented here, right? However, the idea of attacking, again, almost like leaning back or getting back uh, your distance to parry with something is an excellent, excellent idea. So what I would encourage you to do, although this in the form is linear, go on an angle as you're going back. So for example, for here, one, two, they give me a cut instead of sliding straight back, slide back on angle here. And if I really need to step again, I would step more off to the side and probably with a diagonal cut, kind of so keep with those angles, right? So that way you're kind of <laughs> maintaining the equal distance around your opponent who is also moving front and back. So the idea behind this combination is excellent, but again, the actual uh, application of it uh, in the form is a little wonky. To compensate for this, right? There is a combination that we did, uh, the Federation did a long time ago. They don't, as far as I know, they don't teach it as much these days anymore, but something very, very similar, right? So instead of drawing straight back with the 11 and drawing straight forward with that cut, if they were to give me a counter, I'd be stepping off to the side here, block, and pivoting on, or sorry, pivoting on this foot, sweeping this foot back into our dive cut, right? Uh, so if I take it from this side, in case this, this angle helps, coming off, again, forward bond angle, covering, countering with that dive cut here, and usually in that combination, we're stepping back into a defense. So this is called the Peasants Block in Fiore. It's also just a generally good combination of, that you can actually apply in many types of sparring. So if you like this idea in the form, try incorporating that combination that is technically, used to be kind of caught at some point, uh, but try that instead. And that last piece, right? So if we're here and we just did our center cut, we're gonna look behind us. So technically, so there's a lot of different variants of this, none of them are really super conical yet. So one variant is just sweep around defense. Another variant is sweep block defense. Another is sweep into an X defense. Again, noticing the tip is no longer covering my head, but honed in on your throat here into a defense. So I guess one more you can also do would be knee shot, knee shot up, defense. So as, actually my brain is not producing the, uh, the most canonical version right now, but these are all ways they can do. I believe the more modern one uh, is from here, you essentially just go straight into a defense as opposed to doing like, like pausing uh, in that position. However, I like that just because it kind of breaks the tempo a little bit, first of all, but from here, also getting you used to the X guard. They can also get you used to like a knee strike up, which is a lot more of a bomb cook style uh, motion. But these are a lot of ways you can kind of incorporate more interesting and flavorful ideas in a pretty fundamental form. But that's the beginning of form four. Form four is, especially nearing the end, is one of those forms that a lot of schools like to demonstrate because there's a lot of kind of like raw roiling kind of power uh, as opposed to like three, which is a lot more uh, almost like a tactical kind of movement. Uh, three is actually one of my favorites, as I, as I already mentioned before. Uh, but this incorporates some, you know, more power and spins and stuff like that later in the form. So this is also a really fun one for us to get started on. Uh, but with that, make sure you stay safe, stay humble, and keep training.